For those of you that have been listening to my ramblings for long enough, you may have heard me state it in like 17,562 different ways that I am a contrarian, right? That simply means that I go against the grain of commonly accepted thought. You think your doctors are so smart, but they haven't cured anything. So why would you go to them to cure your ailments if they haven't cured, they still haven't cured cancer and they've been, been being fed millions, billions of dollars for cancer research and they still have not figured it out. You see what I mean? There's a group of people out there that we tend to identify as called sheep, bots, NPCs, non-playable characters. You know what I'm saying? That cannot think for themselves. They just go with the herd. You know what I'm saying? Whatever everyone else is doing, oh, okay, I think that now because everyone else does. Couldn't be me though. You know what I'm saying? I'm not disagreeing with people simply to disagree for the sake of an argument to being edgy. It's just I've seen all the lies and deceit that we are brought up, we are brought up believing is true. We think school makes us smart in all actuality, it makes us stupid. Because especially in America, the public school system does not teach you how to think. It teaches you what to think. I'm supposed to align myself with my methodology and my thought process of people that still think Christopher Columbus is a great man. I'm supposed to align myself. I mean, this is, not, this is a little deeper, but I'm going to just keep the keep the vernacular the same. So I'm supposed to align myself with people that think cheeseburgers are complimented by a glass of milk. Well, my public school sister, I use that example all the time. But when I was in school, they give you cheeseburgers, hot dogs, whatever, and they always give you those cartons of milk. Please, anyone, a quick sidebar. Anyone that's graduated high school, anyone that has a sense of in tuneness with their bodies, have you ordered a burger, a steak, a hot dog, pizza, and they say, you know what's going to make this really hit? A glass of milk. What in the get out eating individual Fruit Loops and sipping the milk is going on here? That makes no sense, and your digestive system is crying when you try to eat that stuff. But that's what school teaches you. They teach you that all the subjects are separate. Math and music are supposed to be taught separately when music itself has fractions of four, four, there's four quarter notes in a measure. That's math. Beat, 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 beat. That's tempo. That's science. That's emotion. That's psychology. And they teach everything separately. This is why some people don't do well in school, because they break everything apart, which should all be taught together, in my humble opinion, in a holistic approach to life. See, my life is holistic. When I think about something that I need to heal from, that I need to get better at, I go to the end as I have been taught. The information that I went out there and gathered myself, that I found based off of my energy, frequency, and vibration, these things were attracted to me, and the right information came to me. I go to the end. I see myself happy. I see myself successful. And then I get going. See, some people, they just take off. They don't even know where they're going. You're just running. <sighs> where are you going? I don't know, but I gotta keep moving forward. I gotta grind, I gotta. I mean, that's cool. I mean, they say life is the journey and all that type of stuff, but damn, I would like to at least know where my checkpoints are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So one of the things I wanted to get by on y'all with this one, is a contrarian view to healing, to finding the happiness in life, which is sometimes you have to put the good things down. You know, the, the self-help people, the gurus out there, spiritual people, you know, mainstream, how to make yourself happy in five easy steps. You know, they were always going to say to get rid of the obstacles, the bad things, cut people off, cut back everybody that's holding you back, holding you down, blah, 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 blah. And yes, you should. But that's one half of the Libra scale. What about the things that you love so much? The things that you think you would never get away from? The things that you don't even know are holding you back because you enjoy them so much? I would use myself as an example. You know, when I first moved to Colorado, you know, four or five years ago, five, six years ago, damn, time flies, right? But like, you know, when I first moved here, I tore my ACL playing basketball, right? I went to go play basketball because that was my 
only real thing that I knew of how to be social. You know, I don't go to bars, I don't go to clubs, I don't go to concerts, I don't do the things that most young people do that they consider fun, right? But basketball, basketball is my thing, so I'll just make some friends on the court and see where it goes. Well, life told me that I was using that good, fun, healthy thing as a crutch. I mean, I guess no pun intended, I guess life really delivered the message by putting me on a crutch. Third day moving to Colorado, tore my ACL and meniscus, ACL, MCL, meniscus, and this leg is shot. <laughs> you feel me? But I still don't let that stop me. But anyway, it's like life was literally telling me that this thing called basketball was my crutch. You see what I mean? So sometimes you have to get rid of those things that you thought you loved and you held so near and dear to your heart. And I'm not even saying that you need to go scrap everything that you love right now. But see what life looks like when it's not in your life. Right? With basketball not being in my life, I realized that, I can't lie, that was part of my first depression. Basketball was my first love. And now that I can't play at the level that I used to, because I was nasty. I was nasty. I will admit, I'm not one of those people who said I could have made it to the league, but I could have made it into some D1, D2 college. I don't know if I had the temperament at that point, but we'll see. We'll, we'll, you can't, I don't know where life was going to send me. Nevertheless, you know, it's just like, I was really freaking good, Right? But when I pick up a ball now, it don't feel the same. Like, sure, I got the muscle memory, you know what I'm saying? I got the step back, but I feel lazy. I feel sluggish. I feel slow. Life showed me that there's more to life than basketball. Now, I know some people out there, ball is life, bro. Nah, bro, I'm getting my ball right now. We out. Nah, screw this dude. Ball is life. You know what I'm saying? Ball is your life. It ain't mine. So I'm just speaking from my perspective now. You know? Sometimes you got to put it down. And you have to see if it's replaceable. During my last little three month break or whatever, you know, I had another internal identity crisis. You know, I love having an air of mystery about me. Sure, I see them all open, but for someone that has an acute eye, they'll be like, yeah, he's telling us all this, but he ain't telling me what I want to know about him. I'm a very open person, but even I have secrets. Even, or not necessarily secrets, but even I have things that the whole world doesn't need to know. People closer to me can know, you know what I'm saying? But like the whole world doesn't need to know every single little thing about you. What makes, it, what makes your interaction with a new person that doesn't know about your channel special? You see what I'm saying? So there was a time where, another time where I almost deleted this channel. I was one press away from doing it. And I was just like, you know what? Nope, nope, nope. I help people with this. This is just me going through another little crisis. The first time was for an alchem alchemical sacrifice, some, a sacrifice something of equal or greater value to get what you want from life, a little bit of the dark magic side. This time was I wanted to maintain my mystery and how could I be mysterious if someone could just go online and find out everything about me, you see? But in, but in order for me to make sure that I was making the right decision, I gave myself some time. Let me go heal, let me go relax, let me go learn, let me go enrich myself and then come back to it. It'll always be here. You don't go to the court. You don't go to the, you know, you don't go to the, even the opera. You don't go to anything. That thing that you do every single day, every single week, every single whatever, like clockwork. If you just put these things down for a little bit and see if anything else can bring that same level of fulfillment, sometimes you are going to surprise yourself or you're going to confirm some things. You can surprise yourself by saying, wow. I was wasting so much time with just doing this one thing that I could have been doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G as well. Huh. Or you realize that your life almost feels empty without that thing. And not in like an emotional attachment type of way. It's just this is the thing that brings happiness through your life in a healthy, productive way. But it, you would have only been able to appreciate it that much if you stepped away from it for a minute. I mean, hell, even when you go to work, you get vacation days, you get sick days, you get personal days and stuff. So why can't you do the same thing with your hobbies, with the things that you love? You know what I mean? I mean, this, this could be taken in different ways, but sometimes relationships, you just take breaks from seeing one another. Now, I ain't talking about them breaks where you say, oh, we're taking a break. We're taking a break now, right? We're taking a break? Yeah, 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 yeah. come through, come through. I love you so much, sweetie. I ain't talking about them type of breaks, all right? I'm just talking about like a no contact. You go be with yourself. 
I'm going to go be with myself. And then after a few days, a week or whatever, we come back and we just come back refreshed, calm, and we talk things out. You see what I'm saying? Now, YouTube, this thing right here where I'm making these videos and just rambling out to the world is something that I realize is like option B, where I realize that it's something that my life felt empty without. Now, once again, it's not necessarily YouTube. It's just expressing my thoughts, you know, in a way that now 2,280 people can see. That's, that's still amazing to me. You see what I mean? The funny part is, though, I realize that YouTube makes me feel less alone. And I'm not talking about the dopamine of getting notifications and subscribers and stuff like that, even though I'm sure that plays a small factor in it. It's the fact that I'm, I'm very used to not being heard. I can, I can drop the knowledge, I can drop the wisdom, but you, can't lead, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, right? I'm used to doing so much research in my own little world that I lose track of all sense of time. I'm reading books, I'm listening to podcasts, I'm going on different websites, I'm doing all this stuff to learn all this stuff, and then I try to express it to people, and I don't realize that I've been in a hyperbolic time chamber while people are just moving idly through life. So when I come and tell them something, they don't listen to me. They don't pay attention to it. Guys. Crypto, it's a big deal. Like, this, look at this deal. Look at who's making this. Look at this. They're tokenizing this. Look at this executive order. Look at this, blah, 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 blah. When it comes to this social justice movement, it's not what you think it is. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. Look at all my evidence. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Oh, you're... Da, 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 da. Oh, you don't. I'm bringing proof to what I believe. What are you doing? Well, on Fox News, it said... So YouTube for me is my outlet to speak to like-minded individuals or and or it's a way for me to connect with people that need to hear a particular message. This is why I'm, I'm considered to be very random because I'm not talking to just the peace, love and namaste crystal wearing people. You know, I'm also talking to the people that are down in the dirt, depressed, sad. You know, sometimes I need to make some people laugh by making a weird joke. You know, talking about the dating struggles and stuff because once again, I made a lot of semen retention content. So I have a lot of young men that are going through this type of stuff. And even when I'm not talking about that type of stuff, I still like to keep them engaged. So sometimes I have to throw some low ball humor in there so the people that operate at that frequency can still be engaged with what I'm trying to get by. See, this YouTube stuff, and once again, it's not YouTube, but it's these videos. These videos allow me to be creative, expressive, they allow me to vent. They make me feel good. When I have a particularly good video, like this one is becoming, you know, I'm starting to walk back and forth. I'm starting to feel it. You know, it's like when I start to have these types of videos, it makes me feel so good because I know that I am helping somebody out there kill 15, 20, 30 minutes. When they were about to go make a bad decision, watching my videos, me just rambling in the background, helps them from doing something stupid, something self-defeating, destructive. When I didn't have this outlet, though, I started to feel myself getting anxious. It, it truly did feel like, like nothing, nothing satisfied this itch. Because I told y'all, I know when it's time for me to start making videos again, when I start talking to myself like I'm recording videos. You see what I mean? This is something I'm passionate about. And when I can't operate with my passion, when I can't do the thing that brings me life, that, th that brings me enjoyment, that brings me bliss in the world, I start to get pent up. All that energy that I'm used to sprinting out to the world, into the cosmos, is all just festering and, 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 and coiling within me. And it's just like, oh God, I feel like I'm losing my mind because I'm a talker. You know, it's like air signs and all that type of stuff. I just go, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? So sometimes it's very important to put down what you love. Sometimes people's identities are attached to that thing. Fashion people, for example. Check out my fashion real quick. Hold on. This is the annoying part about having my camera so high up. We got the purple, purple sloth socks. You know what I'm saying? You don't like that. Them socks is ugly, dog. But that's just it. I'm not a fashion person. I don't care. I wear what I like. You see what I'm saying? But you, where you have to have everything name brand, you know, you can't find these sisters. Oh, this is, oh, no, no, no. You know, so I'm fancy with my 
piece of silk that I draped over my shoulders and this costed me $15,000. Your life, do what you do. You got it, that's your life, I ain't judging. It just couldn't be me though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What would your life be like if for a week you had to wear thrift store clothes? You wear thrift store clothes. Someone else has somebody's worn 16 different times. You know what I'm saying? 16 different people have worn these clothes. And now you have to wear, oh God, the fabric. Oh, it's itchy, it's disgusting. It doesn't fit my features correctly. Oh, how do people dress like this? Well, it's a challenge for you, right? Either you're just gonna come out and have this new sense of appreciation for your craft that you've been in day in and day out for the last decade, or it can enrich your pre-existing craft with, wait a minute, this is loose fitting. Oh, and the colors and the wornness and the patch here, the hole here. Wow, this one in this random pocket of a jacket, I found this thing that was motivation for my next line of fashion clothing. You see? But when you get out of your paradigm, when you get out of your comfort zone, that's when the true learning happens. You don't learn something when you know all the answers. You know, if you know one plus one equals two, and every math homework that you do is one plus one equals two. One plus one equals two. One plus, what are you learning? Right? You gotta get out of your, your zone. One plus one equals two, cool. Two times three equals, oh God. Two times three, that's multiplication. That's like addition shortcutted. Oh man, yeah. Ooh, two times three, okay. Two plus two plus two, two times three, two, six. Ha, huh. I could do multiplication. Wait, and then that was just addition in a different way. Oh my God. And there you go. Now, of course, in different contexts and different types of videos, exiting your comfort zone can be incredibly scary. Right? And I, I am all proof of that. You are not going to see me in some super public, super crowded place. You're not going to find me there. My comfort zone is really by myself. And I'm not saying I'm perfect with the advice I give. Some of this advice I need to take myself. But you have to realize, though, it's like when you overcome things, you learn so much more than if you just stayed still. I mean, how do you go on a journey if you never start walking forward? How do you learn that you know how you now you now learn how to climb a big ass boulder that was in your way if you never left your house and started the journey in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to put the things that you love down. I know they make you happy. I know they make you feel comfortable. I know that you know, you're good at it, but at a certain time you have to put them down for a little bit, more than likely to return to them, but return to them enriched. So then you can just become even better at your craft. For example, you know, there's a video game I like to play and I have you know, a couple of my favorite main characters, right? But I will play characters I suck with because playing with that character makes me play in a different style. So yeah, I'm getting my ass beat. I'm losing every other game. When I went from winning every game, I'm now losing every game because I'm not comfortable with the character. I don't know their strengths and weaknesses. But as I work with them, I, I practice them. I learn a new skill set. I learn new movement techniques. I learn new building and attacking timings and stuff like that. But then when I bring that over to my own character, now I know how to defeat that character because I know how they think. Plus, I can utilize their strategies, their positioning, all this type of stuff with my character in a different situation. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes you have to put your comforts down in order to go learn new things. Sometimes you'll realize that that comfort zone was holding you back and you'll never return to it. And sometimes you'll be able to come to it with a new, fresh appreciation for it, new information about it, new ways to express it. I know I went all over the place, but y'all know how I am. Till the next one. Peace.